By 1929, the flapper era of Hollywood was about to end. The Broadway melody features elements that are absent in Wings, reduced title cards, audible dialogue, singing, and tap dancing. As if they aren't enough, the opening scene combines these four, and they are astounding to hear. The spoken words and music are not as corny as I expected. The voices coming out of the actor's mouth are not squeaky, but do these new elements make it a better film than Wings? Let's find out. Considering that the Broadway melody is the first talking picture and musical to win the Best Picture Oscar, it is not a good sign if the song and dance sequences, the elements that must distinguish the film, are bland. No other song is memorable other than the eponym of the Broadway melody, which is frequently sung as if it is the greatest song ever composed. I did not anticipate the performers to reach, match, or outshine the skill set and finesse of Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, Judy Garland, Jean Kelly, or Leslie Caron, yet the dance sequences were performed amateurishly rather than executing them on a jaw-dropping showstopper level. It is as if the performers are auditioning or rehearsing for the first time. While the musical factors do not captivate on an entertaining level, the backstage drama quote-unquote salvages it. I put quotation marks because the story is ubiquitous. It introduces two supposedly talented sisters, Bessie Love as Hank Mahoney and Anita Page as Queenie Mahoney, who charm and repel the producers and the performers with their song and dance routine. In reality, they are just as inexperienced as the other performers. Did they expect to be hired just by singing and dancing next to each other with chirpy voices? As if the two sisters are not idiots enough, I am puzzled as to how the producer perceives Queenie as the better performer than him when Queenie does nothing more than stand up on a pedestal during one of the theatrical moments. Not for nothing, kudos to Bessie's contemporary energy and sincere commitment despite the weak material. She single-handedly makes the film worth watching. She is amusing without being attention-seeking or ostentatious. What brings the film down is its second half. I am not thrilled by the love triangle between Hank Queenie and Eddie because Bessie is the only actor devoted to the film, and the quote-unquote relationship between Eddie and Queenie is underdeveloped. The Broadway melody misses the chance to capture the ups and downs of the entertainment industry. It is marginally interesting, but loses its melody and its mismanagement of musical and backstage drama.